Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video and today we'll be taking a look at this. This is an eMac and if you don't know what an eMac is, it's basically an iMac G4 like the one that I already have but it was made to be cheaper and for the education market. It uses a CRT like the iMac G3 but it has the internals of a G4 and of course the E is for education. After a while they did sell these to the general public as well, then towards the end of its life they went back to only being for education. So today we're going to be taking a look at this one which I bought for £20. Now if you look on eBay there's quite a few of these for sale but no one is willing to ship them because they are so heavy. I've actually been putting off making this video because it meant I would have to carry this thing upstairs and put it on my desk and risk snapping it but finally had the courage to bring it up and so far my desk hasn't snapped in half. Now luckily this one was only five minutes away from where I live so I just went round there, collected it and brought it home all for £20 so that is pretty good but there is a reason why this thing was only £20 and apparently it has no hard drive in it so Today we're just going to take a look at it, try turning it on, see if it's true that there is no hard drive in it, and maybe we will try to get this thing working. Who knows, let's just see how it goes. So first off, let's just take a look around the machine. It's white, which is actually quite nice. It looks to be in pretty good condition. There is some scratching on it, and there's also some paint. So it looks like this has been in the same room as someone who's been using a roller to paint their walls. There's just little splats of paint all over it. I have given it a bit of a clean, but I can do a more thorough job if this thing works. At the top it says eMac. I think in there is a microphone. Two speakers at the bottom. Apparently the later eMacs have very nice speakers. I'm not too sure what the speakers are like on this one. Down here, Apple logo. And in here is our optical drive and there's also some of the specifications written on here. Unlike on the iMac G4, this door is not soft closed so I'm guessing that is one of their ways to keep the cost down. Just taking a look at the inside of this door I will overlay a picture. We've got the serial number and we've also got the specifications so it says 1 GHz G4, 256 megabytes of RAM, 40 gigabytes hard drive and a CD-ROM. The fact that this is a 1 gigahertz model means that this one is one of the models which was sold exclusively to the education market and that's pretty cool. So at some point in its life this has been used in education. I think I would rather have one of these ones than one which any randomer could buy because this is a proper eMac designed for education so I think that is pretty cool. This display I think is 17 inch 16 viewable. It's a CRT. I'm pretty sure it's got a refresh rate above 60 hertz. It might be 75. I'm not sure. I don't really know anything about these machines. I just saw it pop up on Facebook Marketplace. So I messaged and I ended up going collecting it the next day. So yeah. I'm quite happy with this, even if it doesn't work, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to turn it around to look at the size, and you can see there just how deep it is. This is a massive machine, but of course CRT, that's what you expect. And of course, if this didn't have a CRT, it would be just as small as the normal G4. So having a CRT really does make this thing pretty thick. So while I've got the computer turned around, let's take a look at the ports. We've got headphone out, audio in, we've got three USBs. I'm pretty sure these ones are USB 2 on this model. I think there was an early one which had USB 1. I'm not exactly sure though. And then we've got two Firewire 400s. We've got an Ethernet and I believe that is a mini VGA. Rather interestingly, we do have the symbol for a modem, but we don't have one. There is a blank space there, so I'm guessing some models of these came with a modem, but this one didn't. So that is interesting to see. Next up, we've just got the power button. 
and further along we've just got our standard IEC power connector. Okay, so let's turn it around to the back. This is so big it's knocking everything over on my desk, not to worry. This is the back in there is very dusty, but I can't really get in to clean that right now. Maybe if I take this apart, I will be able to get to that. Nothing really to see on the back, nothing to really see on the other side either. And this entire design kind of reminds me of a tooth. I don't know if anyone else has ever commented on that, but that's the first thing I thought when I saw it, I thought it was a little bit tooth-like, but that's just me. There is probably something to look at on the bottom, like more information, however, this thing's so heavy right now, I really don't want to bother tipping it up. Maybe if we take this thing apart later on, I will then show you what is on the bottom. But for now, I'm going to get a power cable, plug this in, let's turn it on and see what happens. If this thing doesn't have a hard drive in it, like it said, You'll probably just get a blinking question mark, but let's just see. So this is the power cable that came with it. It's a sort of creamy beige one. I don't believe this is original. This doesn't look particularly apple-y, but I might as well use this with it because it must have worked with it with the previous owner. So to give us the best chance of it working now, I will just use the same cable. I've plugged the cable into the side of the EMAC. I'm now going to plug this end into the wall. We are calling this an EMAC and not an iMac, that's something I'll have to get used to. So, plugging it in now, the machine should now have power, so I can just press the power button and let's see what happens. And of course, being a CRT, there will be a lot of flickering, but I will deal with that as it happens. So, three, two, one. Got a nice bong then and we've got an Apple logo. So is there a hard drive in this? If we get a spinning wheel, I think it will be trying to boot off an operating system. There we go. I think there's a drive in this thing. I don't know why the previous owner would have said there wasn't. If there is, that's rather interesting. So let's see if anything happens. I've not plugged in a keyboard or a mouse because I wasn't expecting anything to happen. But if we get to a desktop, I will get out a keyboard and mouse. I'll keep filming this just in case anything blows up. Oh, it looks like we've now got a blue screen and we've got a cursor. I think this might load into the operating system. There we go. I think Leopard is on here. However, what are the minimum requirements for Leopard? Because I'm pretty sure, according to this flap in here, we've only got 256 megabytes of RAM and I'm sure that Leopard requires 512 or more, so I'm guessing this must have more RAM in it. I think that's the only way Leopard would be on here, but it looks like the beach ball has stopped spinning and also there's some lines showing on the screen. I don't know if you can see those or not. Hopefully you can see those, but there are some lines going across and it looks like it has crashed, so I'm going to connect a keyboard and mouse just to see if anything happens when I do that, but looks like we've frozen. Keyboard and mouse are now plugged in, but my keyboard isn't lighting up, and also there's no light coming on my mouse, so yeah, this thing seems to have crashed, and those lines across the screen are a bit concerning. I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on just to see if that makes any sort of difference, but actually that doesn't smell too good. I'm not sure I'm going to leave that plugged in actually. Just unplugged it, it smells like very hot electricals. I'm not sure that that's a good smell. Yeah, I've just had a bit of a sniff around the back of this thing. It smells a bit burnt. So I don't think I'm going to plug that back in again. I think something might be up with this. I know that these Emacs, certain models of them, have graphics problems and capacitor problems. I believe a symptom of the capacitors failing is lines on the screen and freezing. So potentially that's what's wrong with this. I don't know why that wasn't mentioned in the listing and they mentioned having no drive when in fact there is a drive in it. So I'm a little bit confused about that, but it smells a bit weird. So I think 
I think we're going to have to take this apart and look inside to see if there's any obvious problems because I don't really want to turn this thing back on. All right, so I've just put this thing face down so we can take this panel off. We can also take the whole casing off. There are screws all the way aside. That screw's not in properly, but that shouldn't have been causing our problems. Looking here, it says eMac designed by Apple in California. And it also says 2004. So this is sort of the mid run. I don't know if these ones are the ones that are affected by the graphics and the capacitor problems. I'm not too sure, I might have to look into that. But for now, let's just take this panel off. In here, we should be able to see if the RAM has been upgraded and we might be able to see if there's any blown capacitors by looking under here too. I've got the tools I will need. This one will be to take the entire casing off. This one just to take the panel off. So we will start just by taking the panel off. Off. And I'm not too sure what the lighting is like because I keep having to stand in front of one of the lights But hopefully it is fine as it is. So there's only one screw holding this on It looks like there is room for two more. So maybe one's gone missing at some point I'm not exactly sure. This might be a captive screw Let's see. Yeah, that screw just stays in there. There's also some more information on that panel too. Let's just put that off to the side and we should now be able to see in here. Now, this isn't standard, this little black box. I wonder what this is. This is a fan mate. So that's cool. Someone's added this in at some point to control the fan. They've wired it in. Somehow in here, you can change the speed of the fan. I have read on a forum before that some people have installed these to regulate the speed of the fan because they can be quite noisy. So that is kind of interesting to see that this one has had that modification done to it. But I don't think this would affect the computer in a negative way like it is now. So I'm just going to have a quick look inside of here and then I'll come back when I've done that. Okay, so I've just had a quick look in here. I can't see anything that is blatantly wrong on the board. I'm pretty sure the internal battery is dead because when it did boot up it did say that the time and date was wrong but there are two sticks of ram in here i've had a look the top one is original samsung ram and that is 256 megabytes so that would have been the single stick that was in here from the factory and the bottom stick is actually from crucial and that is a 512 megabyte stick so in here we've got 768 megabytes of RAM, so that is how it is running Leopard. If it only had the standard RAM, it would probably be capped to Tiger. So pretty cool to see that someone has spent some money and time on this thing, upgrading the RAM and also putting in this fan controller, but can't see anything wrong in here. So I think we're going to have to take the whole casing off. So to take the casing off, I will be using this. There's screws all the way around. I will just start on the side that is closest to me. Unless anything exciting happens, I will just speed this up. But that screw seems a bit stuck in there. There we go, it's now coming out. And these two are different, so I'm going to have to use my screwdriver. So that took longer than I thought it would because I couldn't really get round the back and I couldn't be bothered moving it. I had to struggle to undo them with my fingers. But now they are off, we can take the casing off. Now if you are, for whatever reason, following along at home, you can't just pull the casing off. You've got to disconnect the power button. There's a little connector on the back of it and you've got to somehow get your arm through and disconnect that. So I'm just going to go in there and pull out the connector. Easier said than done, but there we go. That's unplugged and the entire shell can just come off like that. So now that casing is off, I was expecting to just be able to see something obvious and then know what the problem was, but that is not really the case. I can't really 
see anything. All that is just CRT stuff, I'm not even going to bother going near that. That stuff can be quite dangerous if you don't know what you are doing. So, I guess I can just have a quick look. I don't know what I'm looking for. Well, I guess I'm looking for a capacitor which has clearly got problems, but if I find it, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Can't see anything from this angle, so I'm just going to try and turn it around. I don't just want to spin it because that will scratch the front. But that is extremely heavy. So I can't actually move this now. It's in a really awkward position and I can smell burning again. The smell seems to be coming from the top here. So I'm not exactly sure what's in there, whether it's CRT stuff. But whatever it is, it doesn't smell particularly good. And I've never smelt this before with any other of these older computers and never on a CRT. So I don't really know what it is. And I don't really know what I'm going to do about it. So I've got this thing sitting upright again, but now there's black stuff all over me. I think it's dust, although I'm not exactly sure. This thing is quite dirty inside, but there's no real point cleaning it if this thing isn't going to work. I've had a look, I can't see anything that is obvious. I guess I can try and do some research to find out what parts in here do commonly fail, then I can try and look to see if that's what has gone wrong here. So I've just had another look inside of the machine, right down in there to see if I can see anything. I used a torch because it's kind of impossible to see, and I saw some capacitors which looked a bit like the ones which are known to fail. They all look to be just fine, but whether they are fine or not, I'm not exactly sure, but there's not really too much I can do about this right now. Okay, so it's a bit later, and I think it's probably better I just leave this machine be for now, because I don't really know what I'm doing with it, I don't even know what the problem is exactly. It could be the capacitors, although I don't know if that affects every single model, uh, I don't know if this is one of the models which was affected. Um, it could also be the RAM, but I don't think that would give us those lines on the screen. It could be a bad video cable, although I doubt it. So it could be anything really. These aren't really the most reliable of machines and I'm not too sure what that weird smell was. I've never smelt that before with an old machine like this, so that has got me a little bit concerned. So I don't think I'm going to turn this on again today or maybe not again for a while. So I think I'm just going to put this back together, put it in my storage room and just leave it for a while. I will probably keep doing some research to try and find out what's up with this because I would quite like to have it working but even if I can't it was £20 and it's an old Mac. That's not really something you can complain about. So I think that will be it for this video. Nothing really happened but that's just the way things are sometimes. This thing is old and yeah I don't know what is up with this and I don't know if I would be able to fix it even if I knew what was up with it. So that will be the end. Rather uneventful and I haven't found out what was wrong with this. Unfortunately we couldn't get into the operating system. At least there is a hard drive in here. That is the one bonus, at least there is a drive in it because it was being sold as having no hard drive, so that, I suppose, is a good thing. So thank you for watching this video, I'm now going to go now and put this together and try and find out some more things about it. So thank you for watching this video, hopefully it was interesting in some way, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.